ever feel uninspired on those overcast days when the world feels flat and dull? Well, let me tell you, grey days can actually be perfect for street photography. You just need to know how to approach them. Let's get into it. I usually hate overcast weather, and when it's like that, I just don't want to shoot. I'm sure that some of you feel the same way. But a photographer's got to do what a photographer's got to do. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the various things that you can shoot to make capturing images on a grey day just as rewarding as finding out that your cat has a side gig as a jazz pianist. Anyway, enough about cats. Let's jump straight in. One of the best ways that you can create street photography that stands out on grey days is by focusing on people. But try to get personal. Without harsh sunlight, casting shadows or creating highlights, you have a chance to capture expressions and emotions in a softer, more natural way. And doing this will make your photos just as attention grabbing as when shooting under the mythical guise of beautiful light, if you're living in the UK, that is. Get close enough to show those subtle details, like an expression, a glance, or quiet interactions between friends or strangers. But remember, it's not just about snapping a portrait. It's about crafting a narrative. Look for moments that hint at a story or make viewers of your photos wonder what is going on. Grey days bring out a certain mood that can make these personal stories feel deeper because the connection for the viewer is purely the subject without any beautification that is light and shadows. Grey days may lack the contrast of bright sunlight, but they're perfect for bringing out the subtleties in textures, something that can really add depth and interest to your shots. On my latest trip to Hastings, I went down to the boatyard by the sea, and as you can imagine, it was incredible to see just how much texture that was there. I nearly tripped up a few times, but that was part of the fun and the exploration. The weathered wood, the rusting metal, and any other treasures that you find when you're at a boatyard on the beach, every single surface tells a story. On days like this, textures pop in a way that you don't necessarily get when there's harsh sunlight. But remember, you don't need to be by the sea or at a special location to find textures. This kind of detail is all around in every environment. Look at the brick walls in an alley or on a street that you love, the worn fabric of someone's coat, the texture on a door frame, and as it's autumn, even the leaves on the ground. With softer light, these textures stand out more subtly but with a richness that draws viewers in. By focusing on textures, you're not just photographing a scene, you're actually helping people feel it. And when the light's flat, one of your biggest assets becomes colour. Without the sun creating deep shadows, colours can look richer and will look more consistent across the scene. When there's no light, you might need to work the scene a little bit more. So hunt for pops of colour on shop fronts, store signs, paraphernalia, foliage and whatever else you can find. These bursts of colour give life to your shots and make them stand out against the muted tones of the overcast sky. Just a quick intermission, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I always appreciate it. Another method that you can use to grab the viewer's attention is to try layering. Have a go at framing your compositions with multiple layers of interest so the viewer's eye travels naturally from the foreground to the background. Use a narrow aperture or select a focus point past the layered obstructions. Look for details everywhere, shoot through windows, doorways, use a mid to narrow aperture to shoot window reflections, 
and also past shop signs or shoot through anything else that you can find that adds even more depth to your photos and make them feel fuller and richer. You can also use layering simply by adding foreground objects as part of your composition. Grey days have a way of softening the light, which can blur the boundaries between the foreground and the background, creating a flatter look to your photos, but making them no less interesting. Find the right object on the streets and place it towards the bottom corner of the frame. These objects add depth Plus, as you can see, you can create another layer to your shots where you set the scene with a leading line. A leading line will draw the viewer's eye through the photo and onto any subjects in your shot. The simplest objects can add a lot of detail and intrigue to your shots and work as a starting point to guide your viewers deeper into the image. When you're out there on a grey day, foreground objects and leading lines can be the extra touch that your photo needs. For those who are interested, I shot at apertures from approximately f3.2 all the way up to f14 when I wanted maximum depth across the scene. f3.2 is a good starting point when you want softer and slightly more atmospheric scenes as well as shooting narrower aperture, urban landscape style street photography with depth and detail. Unfortunately, because of my disability, I cannot select a focus point on the back of the screen without having my camera on a bloody tripod. So if I want a composition that's sharp from the foreground to the background, I have to select a smaller aperture. But obviously, if you're able-bodied, you don't have to follow my narrow aperture method at all if you don't want to focus and shoot in the manner that suits you. I also use auto ISO 100 to 3200. This gives you a decent broad range for when you enter areas that are fairly open and you're capturing brighter scenes at lower ISOs or perhaps more built up areas when you're grabbing shots with darker compositions at higher ISOs. I always use a minimum shutter speed of 1 to 50th of a second. I don't like my subjects to be completely static. I like to see a little bit of movement when they're walking and perhaps a slight smudge on their faces. But that's just me. These are just my settings that I'm suggesting. But if you have any specific settings that you use, then by all means do so. On my Ricoh cameras, I always use auto area autofocus in the center mode. And finally, as always, I shoot in aperture priority, but if you want to shoot in manual mode or any other mode, then I'm not going to stop you. So how do you feel about shooting on grey days? Is it something that you run away from, kind of like what I've been doing up until now? Or do you enjoy the challenge of shooting on a dull day? I'd love to know, so please let us know down below. So next time it's grey and gloomy out, don't pack your camera away. Embrace the mood, lean into the colours, get close and find those subtle stories. Remember, with a bit of thought, a grey day can bring out a whole new side of street photography. However, if you want to know the one simple habit that makes street storytelling easy, then check out this video here. Until we meet again, go forth and create.